Welcome everyone to exciting high school basketball. We're at the T.W. Oliver Memorial Gymnasium at Pikeville getting ready for the semifinal action game between the uh, McDowell Daredevils and the Elkhorn City Cougars. Be following that game with Johns Creek and Pikeville. And we've got about 11 minutes to go before tip off here. We've got Adam Gearhart down on the floor. I'm P.D. Gearhart. He's got Coach John Ray Turner down, Turner down there for a pregame interview, so we'll take it down there to Adam. Okay, thanks, P.D. This is Adam Gearhart, and along with me, I have Coach John Ray Turner of the McDowell Daredevils. And I hear that you just played uh, this L4 City team about a week ago at McDowell. And how'd you feel about playing against them? Well, I thought our kids played real well against L4 City. We led throughout most of the game, except for about a two or three minute stretch toward the end of the game. You know, we uh, we had them, we let them, I think about four and a half minutes ago, we were 10 points up and made some turnovers, got some bad breaks, and, uh, you know, they, they came out on top. And, you know, and I, they beat us, I think, by nine. Uh, how are you going to match up to Elkhorn City's inside game tonight? Well, of course, I, you know, I like to think of, uh, you know, our inside game is uh, match up pretty much with about anybody's inside game. It's uh, Conley outside and, and Bucket outside, the ones we need to key with key on. Uh, Braley, I think, is, is a major, major player for them. And uh, we did a, a pretty good job with him at, at Prestonburg. If we can you know, do that same, have that same effort uh, against Elkhorn tonight and cut down on Bucket and Hunt a little bit, then... Uh, we can come out on top. Well, of course, you all beat Mullins in the first game, right? Pardon? You beat Mullins in the first game, right? right. And then you come game. on to beat Will Wright in a big win, and I know it has to be a, a great win to be able to beat Will Wright. Well, uh, Will Wright beat us twice. It was, it was definitely a great win. They, uh, it was a very good ball game, exciting ball game. We played well in spurts, and uh, I think so did Will Wright. But we, uh, we came on top, and we, we came out on top, and we're glad. Well, and of course, this is the semifinal game of this Class A, and if you win tonight, we're going to put you in the championship against either Pop or Johns Creek, and we wish you luck, Coach, and I'm glad you stopped by to talk to me. Thank you, Adam. Right. And that was Coach Shay Ray Turner of the McDowell Daredevils. I'll be back in a minute with Coach Randy McCoy of the Elkhorn City Cougars. Okay, thank you, Adam. Uh, once again, Elkhorn City with a record of 16-3, and three, taking on McDowell with a record of 11-11. This is the 15th regional All-A tournament, once again held at Pikeville at the T.W. Oliver Memorial Gymnasium. Uh, Adams are trying to find Coach Randy McCoy of Elkhorn City for a pregame interview here. We'll uh, give him just a couple of minutes to find him here, and we'll go back to the uh, station for uh, a word from our sponsors. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Adams down on the floor with Coach Randy McCoy of the Elkhorn City Cougars. Okay, thank you. Now I'm with uh, Coach Randy McCoy of the Elkhorn City Cougars. And first of all, this is the uh, semis of this Class A tournament, and it's got to be feeling good to get right here. Right well, it is. You know, all four teams still have a chance to go to play in Rupp Arena next week, and I think all four teams will play off for tonight. That would be such an honor to be able to play in the early season, and then, of course, you got a great shot to play in the uh, postseason. Well, we're take it one game at a time but yeah you know the kids are looking would like to have a chance to and we're gonna play try to play hard uh i guess one of your main concerns is uh hunt is he gonna be able to go full he'll be able to go i'm not saying he's 100 percent, but he played hard the other night and he'll play hard tonight well that's good and uh how are you going to match up 
He's on this McDowell team. Tonight. We just got to play better man defense like we played them the other night. We made a lot of mistakes, and we got to do a better job tonight. Well, Coach, thanks for coming by Thank and you. talking to me, and Thank you. we'll see you later. Good luck. And that was Coach Randy McCoy of the Elkhorn City Cougars, and we'll be back with the starting lineups. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. What? Now taking on Elkhorn City. Had almost two pr pretty good interviews you had there with the coaches, and uh, seemed like both coaches are, uh, they've got a lot of respect for each each team. Uh, we talk a little bit about uh, the first for Elkhorn City. Mike Fraley is, is one of the most impressive players that I've seen play this year, especially in this uh, uh, Pikeville gym here. He just seems like he just does it all when, when it needs to be done. He takes it in the middle. He shoots with either hand, and uh, I know a whole lot of them talks about Todd Conley, but this Mike Fraley is another quality player for the Elkhorn City team. He is definitely a quality player, and he's a senior this year. And, of course, when you have Kevin Hunt in there with you, it's going to make one of the biggest lineups in the middle for the uh, 15th region basketball team. When you have two quality players like that inside, it's going to be hard to beat them. Another player for them is uh, Larry Puckett. I know uh, during the Pikeville tournament up here, Conley got in foul trouble, and Larry Puckett come in last quarter. Seemed like to me he scored eight or ten points. Ended up with about 18, 20 points on the night, and he had a big ball game and, and uh, pushed them on to uh, win the uh, PIT tournament up here earlier this year. Yes, one thing I've learned about Puckett, the Washington this year, he's really a good hustler. He can play defense, and he's got a good touch on his jump shot. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about McDowell. McDowell, uh, I believe what their problem is going to be with this Elkhorn City team. They've got Dale Hinkle and Matt Johnson in the middle. These two guys can play with any guys that I've seen play in this region as far as the inside play. Yes, I mean, uh, Elkhorn City might have just a little more height on McDowell, but McDowell probably by far has the ball on them inside with big Dale Hinkle in there. And that's going to be a big key for Elkhorn tonight is to stop them two inside. I believe what I believe the, the main key for this ball game is going to be whether McDowell's guards can shoot the three-pointer. Because you know with Todd Conley and, and Puckett on the Elkhorn City team, they're going to be shooting a lot of threes, and they, and they make them pretty consistently. McDowell's uh, biggest problem is going to be trying to contain the Elkhorn City three-point shooting ability. Also, uh, they're going to have to put a few of those threes in uh, in order to counter. Yeah, uh, I was going to uh, refer to the other day. I got to talk to Earl, and I told him, I said, Buddy, this team's leaving you wide open from out there. So you're going to have to practice up on that shot because if they leave you open, you're going to have to pop it. And, of course, Dougie, Dougie Hopkins, he's got a good shot from out there. If he gets hot, he can light them up. Dougie, uh, Dougie Hopkins and Mike Dudleson is going to have to pick up the slack here tonight. I think if McDowell's guards have a big ball game, uh, they could very easily win this tonight. Yes, yes they could. If what a boost could be, be to McDowell, and, uh, and it would be a big boost to the 58th district, too. Absolutely, but you got to give a lot of credit to this Elkhorn City Cooper team. They've been dominating pretty well all year. They've got a record show, 16-3. That's, that's a good record for a high school team. Yes, it's an excellent record. I had no doubt about Elkhorn, Elkhorn City having such a dominating team this year, and they really got experience, and you got to give them all the credit, and right now they have to be my favorites in the, in the, in the remaining of this tournament. Well, okay, we've got uh, less than two minutes to go before the uh, announcement of the starting lineups, and we'll go back to the station for uh, station break. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. 
I'm Attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Elkhorn City dressed in the uh, blue and gold. And, and now let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's first semifinal game. First for the team to be shown as the guests on the scoreboard, the Elkhorn City Cougars. At guard, a 5'11 senior, number 24, Larry Puckett. At guard, a 6'4 sophomore. Number 34, Todd Conway. At guard, a 5'7 junior. Number four, Brett Salyer. At center, a 6'4 senior. Number 40, Mike Fraley. And at forward, a 6'4 senior. Number 32, Kevin Hunt. The head coach of the Cougars, Randy McCoy. Now, let's meet the McDowell Daredevils. At guard, a 5'11 senior, number 12, Doug Hopkins. At guard, a 5'11 junior, number 32, Earl Cook. At center, a 6'1 senior, number 45, Dale Hinkle. At forward, a 6'3 senior, number 44, Matt Johnson. And at forward, a 6'3 junior, number 53, Scott Stanley. Okay, so there you have the starting lineups for both teams. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit there, Adam. I just noticed that Elkhorn City's wearing blue and gold, and McDowell's wearing gold and blue. Yes, uh, really both colors, both schools have the same colors, and, and there shouldn't be no problems tonight, though. As you know, one is gold and one's blue, fully blue. 
Both teams break out of the huddle, getting ready for the uh, starting tip-off. This going to be quite a good, quite a good game tonight. It should be a good matchup, and McDowell's on a roll right now, and it's going to be interesting to see how they play against this Elkhorn City Cougar team tonight. Once again, I'm P.D. Gearhart, along with uh, my son, Adam Gearhart. He'll be bringing you the play-by-play, -play, and I'll be uh, filling in on the color. So Mike Fraley, he controlled the tip for Elkhorn City. As Conley's got the ball. He moves it on over to Larry Puckett. Larry, well, he's got the ball now. He goes back over to number four. That's Brett Sayer. He put, puts the three up, and it's no good. Rebounded by big new man in the starting lineup for McDowell, 53, Scott Stanley. Scott Stanley's played a lot of ball for this McDowell team this year. He's, uh, he's a workhorse on the board. Yes, he is. If he let him get in there, he can really, really cash in on the boards, offensive and defensive. And Dale Hinkle, right now on Fraley, he's posting up hard against him. He wants that ball. Oh, now big three by number 53, Scott Stanley. And you won't see that much from the big man tonight. Mike Fraley's out top. He goes over to number 24, Larry Puckett. And he puts up a three, and it's no good. Uh, but we got a foul on Mike Fraley. Well, that's going to be... Number four zero, Mike Fraley. So that's his first and team's first. Mike Fraley doing what he always does. He's real, he's real aggressive on them offensive boards, and he just uh, attacked at that time. Elkhorn City's in the man-to-man, -man and uh, McDowell dropped back in a uh, two-three zone. Looked like the last time down there. Yeah, it was really interesting that time seeing Stanley throw up Ooh. three. I, I haven't seen just that. Just about a steal by Conley there from Matt Johnson. Earl Cook's got the ball. He takes it over to the big man. And he takes it over to Matt Johnson, back to Stanley. Earl Cook's going to set the team up. He's looking for an inside play. McDowell really uh, working the ball around. They want to try to get inside and try, probably try to get Fraley in early foul trouble. I think that's what they're wanting to do. They're going to uh, slow the tempo down. They definitely don't want to run with Elkhorn City. And there is Matt Johnson, and he puts two points on the board for McDowell, and it's the score is two to zero. And Fraley usually takes that shot from there. Nurse Conley can't leave him open, but he's off the mark. And there he is. As he always is, Mike Fraley on the offensive rebound, and he sticks it in for two points, two off. He just went right around Dale Hinkle and made a little bank shot. Pretty move. McDowell's really going to have to to block him out tonight, or he'll hurt him bad. Johnson's got the ball up the top of the key. Here's Dougie Hopkins. He shoots from about the foul line. No good. Rebound Puckett. And really, both teams not pushing up the floor too hard right now. I think you'll see Elkhorn City pick up the pace a little bit as the game goes along. Yes, I would say you're right because they have played an up-tempo uh, style basketball throughout the season. Conley's got the ball. He takes to Fraley a little jump shot. No good, but tapped up on the boards by Hunt, but Stanley gets the ball for McDowell, so McDowell's coming back down to work their offense. Goes in the hand and he gets a block by Conley. Good Conley, Conley we, behind. We've seen him do that many a time this year. He's guard, at guard play, but on defensive end, he gets gets many blocks. 90% of the times a player blocks from behind, they get a foul call on him, but that was just clean as whistle. Yes, it was. Back in the Hinkle again, they're working it into him, but he missed the shot, and I believe he might get Matt Johnson that time with the foul. Well, that foul's on number 44, Matt Johnson. That'll be his first and team's first. Still got 5.03 to go, and the score's tied at two all. Conley receives the ball from out of bounds. He's bringing it up the court. The floor general for this Cougar team. He takes it over to number four. That's Brett Sayer. Conley with the NBA three-pointer. Good. That puts Elkhorn City in the lead. Five to two. He was five, six foot behind the three-point uh, <laughs> line. There. He was. He's got much range from out there. Hinkle looking for somebody inside. He takes it back out to Johnson. He works it over to Cook. They're so still looking for Hinkle inside as he got it in there to him, but good hands by Fraley that time as he deflects the pass. Elkhorn City brings the ball up the floor. Can't leave him open from out there. No good, though. I believe that makes him one for three so far from the three-point line tonight. 
Brent Sawyer, he puts a three up, and that's two three-pointers in a row for this Elkhorn C team, and they, McDowell goes down quick to 8-2 with 4.05 left in this first quarter of play. Well, Elkhorn City don't care a bit to shoot those threes. No, they don't, and they got two or three good shooters from out there. And look here, what hustle for number four that time, Brent Sawyer. Great hustle, great defense. Conley drives the lane. He might have charged that charge. time. Yep. Got a little out of control that time. That'd be Todd Conley's first personal foul. Team second. Conley kind of limping after he come up there. He don't... Looks a little, a little weak on his right foot when he comes down on it. Matt now is going to have to take care of the ball a little bit better and, uh, if they're going to stay in this ball game. And them guards, they've got to look for the outside shot for McDowell. They're trying to work the inside too much so far. And Hopkins has got the ball at the top of the key, takes it over to Hinkle. They don't want him out that far on the court, but they're just trying to work it around, trying to find the open man. Tough for McDowell to get a rebound with your big man working out on the perimeter. That's true. Dougie Hopkins, he takes it back in. A great pass to Johnson, but he blows the layup. Hinkle right there on the offensive boards. And if he gets it down there, you can mark it in as he just now did. And the uh, score is 8-4. to four. Elkhorn City with 3-11 left in the first quarter. Conley's got the ball. He finds Fraley on the baseline. Now you write that and down. Well, usually you can. <laughs> write that and down is no good. Yeah, I'll write that and down is no good. <laughs> usually I see him from there, and he's usually a popular, but that time just a little off the mark. Johnson's got the ball up high, puts it back over to Cook. Cook's looking inside. Just a little slip right time. Good defense by Elkhorn City. They're applying the pressure on him pretty heavy out there. He done a good job of getting out of that trap, see if he can do it again. He does. Dale Hinkle looked good. Dale Hinkle puts the basketball in. That's his fourth point of the game, and the score is eight to six. Elkhorn City still in the lead by two points. Conley, he's working the ball around. I believe McDowell's gone to some kind of zone, and Fraley gets it down low, and he forced it in. It might have been the charge that time, but they didn't get it. Dougie Cole had, I mean, Dougie Cole, Dougie Hopkins had good position that time, but. No, it looked, but, like, a good, looked like a good move, uh, Mike uh, Fraley. Well, anyways, score is 10 to 6 now. Hopkins got it up. In the corner, goes over to Johnson. Cooks got it up the top of the corner. He drives. Good move. Oh, no, man. Conley, rejection city on that play. And they move it up to him. Bear watch. He'll follow this one up. Oof. And Earl Cook comes down with the rebound. He pushes it down the court. Finds Johnson. He pulls up for a three. Oh, he couldn't get the roll. Big there Stanley. is the big man, Stanley. Got Stanley. And there's about the third offensive putback so far for McDowell. And we said that'd be a good, <coughs> a good aspect for them in this tonight's game. Uh oh. We got Stanley on the foul at time as he fouled Hunt. And Hunt's a limping a little bit. Maybe that ankle's still a little sore. And we have do what? It's uh, Scott Stanley's first personal foul. Team's second. Ball comes in, and Puckett attempts the three. No good. Earl Cook comes up with another rebound. He's got a few of them long rebounds so far tonight, and it's always good to have a guard getting those rebounds. Earl plays a good floor game. I uh, wish he'd shoot the ball a little bit more. But... Johnson has the ball. Cook up at the top of the key. He's looking for something inside. Stanley's got it over on the corner. He's looking for Johnson inside. Might find him. He's posting hard. He's got Cook over on the baseline and stripped by Puckett, but it goes back to McDowell. Earl acts like he's got a little bit more confidence than that. We're talking about Earl Cook. He's, uh, I thought it, he was going to attempt that shot. It was a good defensive uh, play by number 24, Larry Puckett. Oh, and good defense that time by Elkhorn C. As Fraley deflects it off Hinkle's leg and it goes back over to Elkhorn City and, and McDowell's having problems right now working against this pressure D of Elkhorn City. Hey, McDowell's done a, a good job of coming back there. They was, uh, they was down 8-2 to there and I thought there was going to be a runaway but uh, they fought back got right back in this ball game. There's Hunt coming back to free throw line. You can write that and down. And that puts a score, Elkhorn City 12, McDowell 8 with 23 seconds to go. And McDowell probably looking for the last shot in this first quarter of play as Dougie Coles got it up at the top of the key. Oh, no. 
Stanley with a delayed pass that time. I'll get Dougie's name right, yeah, Dougie Hopkins. Pretty good fella. Right? But that time, Will Wright, oh gosh, I'm getting tore up here. Ooh, big rebound by Mike Fraley. Oh, well, after uh, the first quarter of action, we've got uh, Elkhorn City on top, 12 to eight. We'll be back after uh, we take this station break. It's WPRG TV 5 Sports. I want to talk about a subject that's a little bit hard to talk about. Some of you out there may feel like you're at the lowest point in your life. Feels like it's never going to get better. You feel like the only option out there is to end your life. I promise, that's not the only option, and in fact, that's not an option at all. Taking your life doesn't end the pain. It gives the pain to other people. Keep your head up. I promise things will eventually get better. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. The way that uh, Coach Randy McCoy brings his chairs out on the floor, though, I think he might have might have picked that up uh, from uh, Coach Tino down in Kentucky. I know he does that uh, uh, since he's been coach down there, and uh, I think he kind of gets his players away from the crowd a little bit, where he can talk to them and uh, don't have to be uh, worried about the. Being disturbed, so it's true. He gets their full attention out there. They don't have to be disturbed by anybody in the crowd or hollering at them or anything. Okay, Matt Gow takes the ball in once again. They're behind 12 to 8 to this Elkhorn City team. So, all right, Cook has got the ball at the top of the key, throws it over to Duddleson. Duddleson gets his pass deflected by Conley. Out of bounds, they go back to McDowell. Dawson so far unheard of in this game. He's a factor for McDowell. He needs to start lighting it up from outside. He's a good outside shooter. Nichols got up top of the key. Johnson back over. Johnson's got the ball again. Ooh, just about a good pass that time from Stanley, but it got picked off again. And what a move. What a move by Ty Conley that time as he goes straight down the lane, lays it in left-handed. Well, they're a, they're a boxing uh, Bill Hinkley, I know we're going to try to get it in the inside to him. McDowell's going to have to open that up and hit a few outside shots here. Good move by Dawson that time. He dished off to Johnson. That's two points for McDowell. That makes the score. The Cougars 14 and McDowell 10 with 7.07 left in second quarter action. Just as I said that, they drove the ball in the middle and dropped it off to Matt Johnson. He puts it in. Yes, that was a good penetration move that time. Oh, bad shot that time by, I believe that was Puckett. Earl Cook drives the lane. He dishes out to, oh, good head fake by Delson. What a pass. And right back in over Matt Johnson. For two. What a pass by Delson that time to Johnson. He puts in his fourth point in a row. That makes the score 14 to 12 as McDowell cuts it to two. And Earl Cook on the steal. Let's see what he can do here. Good pass to Johnson. And Johnson oh, puts boy. it in again. We got a tie game, 14 all, and that's a oh, six point. point from Johnson. I didn't see no way in the world Earl Cook get that pass in there to Johnson. He tried to lead it. He did. I was just getting ready to say the same thing. I don't see how he got that pass through there. Oh, and another steal at the all, oh, just about. And Hunt gets fouled by Lee Boy Hinkle that time. And that was an act of shooting, so. Well, Mike Bell had the, uh, I had the ball again. Uh, excuse me. Yes, they did. And Hunt will go to the line for two shots. Yeah, you know, uh, the Daredevil starting to turn their defense up a notch or two, and, and it's paid off for them here a couple of times in this second quarter. Okay, uh, Dougie Hopkins goes out, and Alan Joe Moore comes in. Is the first one good? No, Hunt missed the first of his two shots, and he'll step to the line for the second. This Alan Joe Moore come off the bench up here the other night uh, against Will Wright, and, and he played a fine ball game. I hear he really come on for 
of Johnny Ray Turner Stardellis. Really a big lift off the bench, and Hunt's second shot is up and good, and that makes the score 15-14, Elkhorn City, and Cook brings the ball up the floor, and he gives over to Douglas. Dawson working the ball around. He's getting some good push of defense from Puckett out there. He had to pick up his dribble, and there's the guy he was talking about from McDowell and Johnson. And here's Cook for a three. Oh, boy. Cook gets his confidence out there. They're going to leave him open. And he'll start hitting that, and that puts McDowell in the lead by two, 17 to 15. Well, Burl Cook to perfect that shot. That make uh, McDowell uh, quite a bit better. And here's another NBA throw. Uh oh, uh -oh. Uh -oh. big Fraley. How many's that on Fraley? Mike Fraley, that's his second personal foul, team third. Uh -oh. You better watch it the rest of this. We got 5.30 left in the second quarter, and it really hurt Elkhorn City to get his third foul. So McDowell looking good to this point. So as I say, if they turn it over, that was number four on the steal, Salyer. Here's Conley out the top. He takes it in. To well, let's see. McDowell steals it once again, so it's just a back and forth. I can't hardly keep up with it here. And another steal. Or no, no, uh, McDowell keeps the ball. Right. Dubson, what a motor through the, to the paint, but he missed the layup. He gets his own rebound, takes it back up, and puts it in. And that moves McDowell to the biggest lead of the night, 19 to 15. Yeah, okay, boy, I tell you what, we've got a lot of action here uh, early in this uh, second quarter. Uh, Elkhorn City calls a timeout. Once again, 444 to go in the second quarter. McDowell on top, 19 to 15. Let's go back to the station for a station break. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. Yes, they have, and this is going to be a good game. And here's another turnover from the Cougars. And McDowell pushes it up the court. McDowell, they're playing real good basketball. Oh, what a pass. Oh, what a yeah. foul. Oh, what a basket by Johnson. He is on far tonight. He is playing one of the best first half of basketball. I've seen any player play in the 15th region this year, and he puts the basket in and gets fouled. The new man, Alan Joe Moore, comes in and makes a terrific assist in there to him. Throws it around two men. Matt Johnson looked like he spilled that ball and put it in. And then uh, on top of that, uh, uh, they got Todd Collin for the foul. So, and there he hits his free throw. And that puts McDowell up to a 22-15 lead, seven-point lead, and that should have been a charge right there. As Puckett just run over top of Johnson that time, but they will assess Johnson with a foul. Well, that's Matt Johnson's second personal foul, team fourth. Puckett's got it over in the corner. He looks out the top. I believe we got substitution in for Elkhorn City. That's number 42, uh, Justin Hall. That foul's going to be on uh, Earl Cook, so that's Earl Cook's first personal foul. Team's fifth. Coming into the game is Scott Stanley. He'll replace Matt Johnson. Number 24, Puckett from the corner. Shot up, no good. And Stanley comes in and gets a quick rebound. 
Dawson taking the point right now, driving to the basket. Oh, what a dish off. Oh, yes. McDowell is executing perfectly right now. They're driving the ball down the lane, dishing it off to the big man. What more could you ask of a team? Boy, they, McDowell's excited. They have to be there. They have to be a big underdog in this game. Oh, I'd say quite an underdog, but they are playing great right now as Bailey hits one from the corner. And uh, McDowell has really come out of a slump in coming into this class. They so beat Mullins the first game, 74 to 54. The second game, there was a big upset over Wheelwright, 57 to 56. And now they're leading Elkhorn City, 24 to 17. Good Nelson for a three. Nelson puts in the big three, and that puts them back out to a 10 point lead, 27 to 17, with 316 left. And McDowell's in extremely good shape right now. And that was Justin Hall hit one from the corner of the free throw stripe. That cuts the lead to eight points. Well, uh, McDowell's favor. Earl Here's Cook. Cook. Again. Ooh, he had it online that time. Just a little hard from Cook. He's pucket. He's looking, trying to find somebody inside. Takes it back out to Sayer. Luger getting ready for Elkhorn City run right here. Big rebound by McDowell. We got some scrappy play down there, and Dawson comes up, but he gets it stolen from him. Oh, Dawson Hunt blew the layup that time. Hinkle's got the ball. He's looking inside. Oh, he had. He had Stanley there for a minute. And another turnover from McDowell. This uh. Elkhorn City run out, but they had to draw it back out. Good defense by McDowell on the transition. Oh, oh gosh, they got Stanley with the foul there, a little reach around. Scott fell on Scott Stanley, number 53. That's his second personal foul on team six. So from this point on, the remainder of this first half, uh, Elkhorn City will be a shooting the bonus. And with 2.08 left, McDowell's leading 27 to 19 over Elkhorn City. Bailey's got the ball. He takes it back over number 22, a replacement in the game. He is, don't have a number on him for Elkhorn City. Anyways, here's Conley with another NBA three-pointer. No good off the mark. Elkhorn City gets the rebound. And working the ball around. Looking for inside play, and they got Conley inside, and he puts it in. So Conley shooting from the outside and a big play on the inside. They just, they just keep chipping away at that lead. Uh, this, I didn't get to see the first game that they played with the game a week ago, but uh, I listened to it, and it went about like this. Uh, like Elkhorn City out on top, and then McDowell made a big run. And then Elkhorn City just overtook them in the uh, fourth quarter and come out over the, a big win over, over at McDowell, I believe that. Both teams is playing excellent defense right now. You gotta hand it to the defense for all the turnovers and Elkhorn City's cut to six points, 27 to 21. And we have a minute 28 left and Dawson with three pointer, no good. Dougie Hopkins comes with the rebound but they call a jump ball and the possession goes to the Cougars. And Dougie so, went in there and he was working hard. He had to hold the ball because they both uh, got it about the same time but uh, they'll get to the next position. Here's Fraley with a little jump shot, and he's way off the mark that time as he hit nothing but the backboard. And Moore that time lost it out of bounds. Really couldn't blame him for that. And good Elkhorn City defense. So Elkhorn City's going to have be in pretty good shape to come back and be in, in uh, two or three points before this half's over. Ooh. Fraley gets the rebound. He's fouled by Cook from behind. And there's the big man on the boards again, Mike Freddy for Elkhorn City. The foul was on number 32, Earl Cook. So that's his uh, second personal foul. And I think uh, Mike Freddy was uh, going for the shot, so that'll send him to line for two as said. I looked with 59 seconds left for McDowell, maybe to go down and look for the last shot. It'd sure be nice as uh, Freddy put the first shot in. It'd sure be nice to go in with a lead over Elkhorn City here in the first half, wouldn't it? I thought that's what they would do the last trip down the floor there, but they, uh, they got a little excited. Bailey really hits the second shot, both good, and he cuts it to four points, 27 to 23. 
And they got a foul on number 22 of Elkhorn City. We have no, no number on this guy. And more than likely, McDowell will work for the last, last shot of this half. Nelson works it around, back over to Cook, keeping it out top. Oh, what a pass to Hopkins, and he is fouled by number 24, Puckett. And that'll send him to the line for two shots. Well, that's Larry Puckett's first, uh, first foul. Took the headsets off, tried to catch uh, number 22's name. I don't know if they've switched the uh, uh, Jeff. Is it Jeff Bailiff? I don't know. I'm looking uh, 22, Jeff Bailiff. That's who it is. I believe Dougie, Dougie uh, Hopkins made the first one. Missed the second. So the score is 28 to 23. We got 40 seconds left, and the Cougars probably be working for the last shot. But not if Conley gets it and he fires it up. And Another it's no good. Puckett gets the offensive rebound, puts it in, cuts the lead to four. Good defense and good hustle by Hunt that time as he almost had another McDowell turnover. And with 21 seconds left, McDowell is up by three points. Mike Dulson, really lucky that time that Conley hit it back out because none of his players was getting open that time. No picks was set by the McDowell team. He just pull it out top, work it down for the last shot. That's probably what McDowell be looking to do. Sure, sure be good for them to go in as an underdog with the lead in the first half against Elkhorn City. Alan Joe, Alan Joe Moore up for two. And Moore coming off the bench, a big spark to this. McDowell team puts it in. Last shot attempt, no good by Puckett. And at the end of the first half, we got McDowell on top, 30 to 25. Okay, with that fine, let's go back to uh, Harold, Kentucky, uh, to the station for a station break. This is WBRG TV 5 Sports. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. 
I'm Attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. And McDowell is leading Elkhorn City 30 to 25. And we got some uh, extracurricular activity on for from, I believe it is, the McDowell Majorette. So we're going to take it down there to them for the halftime show. Okay, I'm not sure what to call them girls, but they've done a fine job. I think they're the MacDale Majorettes. What a, some sort of floor dance, I'm not sure. Uh, dance team Majorettes or something, something to that effect. But they did a pretty good job out there. We got about 4.27 to go over here uh, before the uh, second half action begins. So let me uh, run down these uh, statistics I've got here right quick. For Elkhorn City, we got Mike Fraley with eight points, Todd Conley with seven. Uh, both those players got two fouls apiece, two personal fouls. Larry Puckett's got one personal foul and two points. Kevin Hunt has got three points. Uh, Brett Sayers got three points. Justin Hall with two for a total of 25. They shot four free shots and hit on three of those. Okay, now for the uh, MacDowell Daredevils. Dale Hinkle with four. Matt Johnson uh, had the hot hand there uh, the uh, first half. Uh, he had uh, 11 points. He's got two fouls. Dale Hinkle with one. Doug 
Ricky Hopkins scores one point. Mike Nelson scores five. Scott Stanley with four. Earl Cook with three. Alan Joe Moore comes off the bench. He plays a, a real good game. Gives them a, a shot and arm, you might say, for two points for a total of 30 points. Uh, McDowell shot three free throws and hit on two of them. So that's uh, got seven free throws in the first half, and that's, that's very low score, uh, very low total of uh, free shots taken. We had, uh, uh, McDowell had 17 fouls, and Elkhorn City had six. So I believe that'll uh, definitely pick up a little bit uh, here in the uh, uh, second half of action. Once again, both of these teams good free throw shooting teams, and uh, I think that's, uh, it'll come right down to that, just like the game that uh, can be great to be done up here with uh, McDowell Wheel right. McDowell hit uh, 10 of 11 free shots in the fourth quarter to beat the uh, good Wheel right team. So you might see a repeat of that tonight if they can uh, uh, keep uh, Mike Freddy and Todd Conley from uh, uh, eating them up uh, on the inside and outside of them. I tell you what, uh, you keep doing stats pretty good. They're some excellent stats. You act like you've done that before. And as you said, Elkhorn City has definitely got some work cut out for them. And I mentioned the steps that McDowell's took to get to this semifinals. Now I'm going to tell the steps that Elkhorn City's took. Okay. Let's see. Elkhorn City. They played the first game of the tournament that's on Monday. They played against Millard, and they beat them 84 to 16. In their second game, they played out Central, which got a high. It was a kind of a close game, but they beat them 63 to 57. And of course, they're in the semifinals game. And in our next game of the night, we got Pipe on Johns Creek, and that will be a barn burner, no doubt about it. Yeah, I think uh, Pipe will play a, a good ball game uh, last night to beat Pantsville. And I believe Johns Creek was a little bit off last night when they played the Phelps, even though they come away with 63 60 winner. I think they were going to have to step up a notch uh, tonight in order to. Uh, to knock uh, Pikeville off. Well, we've got uh, a little over a minute to go before the second uh, half uh, begins. We'll go back to uh, the station for a station break. This is WPRG TV 5 Sports. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley Davidson in Pikeville. I want to talk about a subject that's a little bit hard to talk about. Some of you out there may feel like you're at the lowest point in your life. Feels like it's never going to get better. You feel like the only option out there is to end your life. I promise that's not the only option and in fact that's not an option at all. Taking your life doesn't end the pain. It gives the pain to other people. Keep your head up. I promise things will eventually get better. The hottest device of the new year is now at Appalachian Wireless. The Samsung Galaxy S21. Till the end of February, all Samsung S21 models will be $400 off on the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. I hope we see a second half like we did that first in there. Uh, it was uh, it started out real slow, but uh, there was a whole, whole lot of action there. It just seemed like the spurts. Uh, uh, Todd Conley come out and hit a big three, and then uh, Earl Cook hit a big three. They took it inside to uh, Mike Frey, and, and uh, he made a, a bucket or two there that uh, kind of put Elkhorn City out on front. And uh, when it looked like uh, Elkhorn City was going to run away with it, McDowell just caught a car, and, uh, and they haven't really they haven't looked back. They had a few breakdowns, but uh, I, I, I think it uh, we'll see a little bit more up tempo game this second uh, half, and uh, probably see a few more fouls on Callahan. Yeah, what we're talking about the key for McDowell be to hit the outside shots, and they've done that so far. And uh, Elkhorn City struggled on their outside shoot, so that could be the the emphasis on 
this game right now for Elkhorn is to, to establish their outside game a little better in the second half. And McDowell has the possession going their way, and they receive the ball first of all. And Dougie Hopkins takes it down and hits from about the free throw stripe. And that puts McDowell up by seven, 32-25. Conley needs to get hot for this team. Hunt, he gets it inside, uncontested. Lays it up in, almost, almost blew the layup there, but it did fall for him, and 32-27 score, McDowell's in the lead. And Elkhorn City looks like they're putting on a full-court press against McDowell. As soon as I say it, they turn it over on it. Good well, defense by Elkhorn City. Doug, Doug Hopkins, uh, he and his face got their, uh, yeah, Scott uh, Stanley to uh, drive toward the basket, and he just held his ground, and uh, they throw the ball away. Conley, they need him to get on the mark, and that was an iron ball from him at the time. Really, really not shooting too well tonight. And Cook puts it down the floor. He gets the ball back. He puts it in. Oh, Hinkle had a wide open lane. If he could have held on to the ball, good look from Cook that time. I think he ran the palm of the hand and just uh, ricocheted off of him and went out of bounds. I believe he's seen the lane he had behind him was wide open and just tried to tried to get the ball and shoot it before he really got his hands on it. Belcourt City works the ball around and take it down into Fraley. And he's off the mark. Might have got fouled that time, but Conley gets off his rebound and scores. And good hands by Conley at time as he flexed it out of bounds and Elkhorn City will have time to set their full court defense up. This must have uh, been what uh, worked for Elkhorn City when they played McDowell earlier in the league last weekend. Oh, now you can't do that. Cook that time was really out of control whenever he got up in the air. He needs to keep on his feet and uh, keep his passing options open. When you get in the air, your passing options cut down fast. And they work it back into Fraley again and just about stripped. And puck it from the corner of the free throw line. Count it. And the score is 32 to 31. McDowell's lead has been cut to one point. Well, Coach Randy McCoy is, is on far over there. He's trying to get this team fired up. He's uh, got both fists up in the air, uh, uh, screaming and hollering at his ball team, trying to get them fired up. And uh, evidently it's... Uh, it's paid dividends because they've come out here uh, storming. He he's really a motivator for his players. I've watched him several times so far this year, and and he's really a player's coach. He he gets on to them pretty heavy, but he's got that enthusiasm in himself, and he just lets the players know. And it's always good to see your coach have that fire in his eyes. It makes you want to play harder and win. You've got two good teams here and uh, and two excellent coaches. Uh, talking about coaches, uh, Johnny Ray Turner from McDowell seems like he. Uh, just like last year, uh, they lost a lot of games. They probably had, I uh, don't know if they, they probably had a little better than 500 uh, in the season, but uh, when it comes time to time, they're right in the thick of things. You can't count them out at all. Hey, Johnny Ray Turner, he has a way of getting the most out of his kids in the big games. That's what I've come to learn from Johnny Ray. Look here, another turnover, McDowell. Good hands by Conley at time. Conley drives to the baseline, and he is fouled either by Hinkle or Johnson. Four, four, I believe this is. Matt Johnson, that'll be his third personal foul, and that'll send Todd Conley to the line for two. And as well as uh, Johnson's been playing for McDowell, that hurts him, but they're also a good replacement. He's hit a three-pointer and a couple of two so far. And, well, he did in the first half. And Conley will step to the line for two shots. His first shot's up. No good. Conley will get one more attempt to tie this game up at 32 all. If he does, hit this free throw. Boy, this press is torn back down on the pieces. They're going to have to figure out a way to get that uh, ball up the floor. Yes, it has so far. They need to settle down. They don't have to run the ball like that right there. They need to back it out. Off balance shot by Duddleson that time it is good. That puts McDowell up by two points, 34 to 32. And Conley comes back down and out of control. Gets himself in trouble, but he gets it out of there. Has an open three. No good. Fraley on the offensive rebound, but he is an offensive rebound warrior. 
And he sticks another two points in. 34 all is the score. Another turnover. Conley snaps it out from behind. Stanley, so now Elkhorn City has turned their defense up tremendously. That's about five turnovers from McDowell the road. Looks like from, uh, from where we sit, uh, what McDowell needs to do is throw over that uh, uh, press that uh, Elkhorn City is putting on. They get the ball to the floor. Here's uh, another NBA from Conley. He still can't get one on the mark. He must feel it because he's put up quite a few. I'm sure when that first one falls, the quality shooter he is, it'll start falling for him. And, what, and I was saying, McDowell, they need to slow the ball down some. He walks right there. Another turnover. You see, they're, they're trying to move the ball too fast against this press. They need to just get it up the court and work the ball around like he did the first half. They did it the first half and worked it inside, but you're not doing it now. And that's where Elkhorn City's turned their defense up, and, uh, and uh, McDowell's trying to match it by turning their offense up, and it's not a working for them right now. Well, the score is 34 all with 440 left in this half and uh, 440 left in the third quarter and I believe this piece of ice out on the floor. And it will be the Cougars ball. Puck it, bring it from out of bounds, brings it in to Salyer. Salyer works it around. Back over to Puck it. Puck it wide open for the jump shot. No good. Hinkle pulls the rebound down. Cook working it up the floor to Dullison. Dullison bringing it down the court. He pushes it back out to Hopkins. Wide open for the three. Count it. And that's Dougie Hopkins, I believe, second three-pointer of the night. And that puts McDowell the lead, 37 to 34. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to hit that open shot because uh, Elkhorn City's a, oh, a big charge by Mike Gray. Charge in that. Good. Good play by Dougie Hopkins. He just pulled over there and held his ground, and uh, Mike Fraley ran over top of it. So that would be Mike Fraley's third personal foul. Ooh, and there's one trying to get him out of there fast as uh, Coach McCoy sent somebody to replace him to the scores table. Ankle drives it down with a little jump shot, and McDowell starting to turn things up again as they take the lead by five, 39 to 34. And what a game this is going to turn out to be. I can just feel it. Well, there just ain't no quit in this McDowell team so far tonight. Conley finally, finally finds the mark from three-point range, and he pulls the Cougars within two, 39 to 37, with 3.28 left in third quarter play. See how easy they got to beat that uh, press there and just throw it over the top of it? Yeah, and then they come down and then they makes a bad pass, and we got a jump ball possession to Elkhorn, Elkhorn City, and trying to get a little physical out there. Both teams really want this game. They know this is a big game that's going to put them in a championship game, a chance to go to the rough and play. Gosh, they got to be feeling good out there. They definitely want to give it their all. Conley's got outside again. They need to pressure him out from outside. If he gets off from out there, it could be bad for him. And another turnover from Elkhorn City. And turnover City so far in this third quarter for both teams. Both teams has uh, picked up the defense quite a bit, and then uh, McDowell got a big turnover on that. Oh, he's going to get trapped. He has to get out of there. Oh, Lord. Oh, 10 seconds. I knew that was coming when he threw that in off Dawson's foot. They need, a, need to try to keep it out from the corners like that. They're getting double and triple teamed and really getting them in trouble. And here's Conley with the baseline jump shot. And he gets the roll. And I'd say when he gets the roll, he can get them in many shapes, forms, and fashions. And that ties the score 39 off. Another turnover from McDowell. So Elkhorn City's looking good on defense. Conley can't leave him open right there. He'll hit it. No good. Took down the rebound. He walks. Elkhorn City will have the ball again with 2.29 left in the third quarter of play with the score of 39 off. Big rebound by Earl Cook there, and uh, he just kind of spin off from the one Elkhorn City player's uh, hip there and, and took a stroll. He's got several rebounds in tonight's game. Really productive on the boards. And that was number 42 for Elkhorn City. Just Paul tipped in two. And Elkhorn City goes in the lead for the first time in quite a while in this game at 41 to 39. And who was the foul on? 
That will be on number 24, Larry Puckett. That'll be his uh, second personal foul, team second. Ball goes in the hand, Corey takes it back to Dawson. They're going to try to work something inside. No, but no, Dawson feels a three, no good. Rebound, Stanley. Stanley's going to take it back up inside. Might have got fouled, but no call. They're definitely letting them play a little bit. A uh, lot of contact on that. It's been a good overall game so far by the refs calling their corner pretty consistently, letting them play rough like that. Here's Hawkins bringing it up the court. He might have the numbers, but we got a foul on number 42 there. That'll be foul on Justin Hall. That's his first team third. Team's third, and I do not think that was on the shot, so it'll be McDowell taking it out of bounds. I believe it was, Adam. I think he was in. Oh, no, they might have got him Scott for the shot. Scott on the line for shooting, too. It looked like he was going to dish that one off that time, but I guess he was going to shoot. Going up with it. Stanley eyes the basket. Puts it up. And it runs around. Good. So a good touch by Stanley at time. And he never built a goal, didn't he? Yeah, I did. There he is, squared up for the second. Shot up. Good. And it's another tie ball game. 41 all with 140 left in third quarter play. McDowell putting on a little full court press of herself. And here's Conley, a little bit out of control. But Stanley fouls number 42, Justin Hall, on the shot for Justin Hall will go to the line for two shots. That'd be Scott Stanley's third foul and uh, the first uh, personal or first team foul. So that's just the first team foul for us to see so far. I believe that's our, uh, yeah, for, uh, Mc, for McDowell this yeah, morning. Yeah. So if they get in a bad situation in the fourth quarter, they're going to have a couple to spare. Looks like Alan Joe Moore comes back in for Scott Stanley. And here we got Justin Hawk line. He eyes the basket, he released it, and the uh, basket is good. He'll get another attempt. Squares up, takes a couple of dribbles. Shots up, no good. Rebound off to Cook, and Cook has been, been a crucial factor for McDowell on the board tonight as he gets fouled by number 22, I believe. Number 42, Justin Hall. Well, that'll be Justin Hall's second. Team's fourth. Team like Earl gets a little bit excited when they put the pressure on him, Murray, and uh, I think the Elkhorn team, team sees that. If, if he just take his time, and that was a foul number 22 at that time, as McDowell looks out on that because nobody was breaking open. He just take his time and bring the ball on up the floor and uh, look for his, uh, his men throw over top of this uh, press. I think they can get the ball up the floor most every time. Instead of running, trying to run the ball up the court and, and make the long pass, they need to just break it down, bring it up a little bit at a time. And here's an open court for Hopkins. He passed over to Cook. He's got inside. Reverse layup, no good. Tip, Hinkle, no good. Hinkle again, good. Hinkle's a workhorse on the boards, and he puts McDowell here by one point, 43 to 42, with a minute 05 left in third quarter play. He just wasn't going to be denied that time. Conley with the shot. Good from about the free throw line, and if he gets hot, it, it could be pretty bad for McDowell. He's got 10 points in this third quarter. And another foul on number 22 as he fouls Hinkle. That's going to be uh, Jeff Bailiff. That's his uh, second personal foul and the team six. So from here on out, McDowell will be a shift the bonus. And uh, like I said before, if they shoot free throws like they uh, uh, did against Wheelwright, uh, they could come away from here with a big win. But uh, uh, we still got a lot of basketball to go before this one's over with. Ball comes in to Hopkins. He takes it back. And it's back over to Duddleson. He fires the three. No good. Rebound number five. And he's a new replacement in for Elkhorn City. Bradley come. Conley with the ball. He takes it to the corner. Another jump shot off the glass. No good. But he gets fouled in the process by Duddleson. Oh, that'll be Mike Duddleson's first personal foul. Team's second. But Todd Conley will go to the line.
shoot too. Adam, uh, he don't uh, he don't care if he shoots the ball, does he? No, he don't. I was getting ready to say. He's so already got 10 points this third quarter. 11, 11 now as he hits the first one. But just think how many shots he's took. If he would have hit a good percentage of his shots, he would have had a lot more points in this third quarter. And his second shot from the free throw lines up, no good. But El Quincy gets a rebound, no good. The ball go back to McDowell as Justin Hogg got the offensive rebound that time off the free throw shot, but the basket's that's going to be on Brandon no Crum, and that'll put uh, McDowell at the free throw line if my tabulations are correct. So the foul's on Brandon Crum that time. I didn't catch that foul. Must have been over the back. So Alan Joe Morris stepped to the line for the bonus. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he come in and hit a couple of key three shots in that uh, wheel right game. Moore, he, he has come off the bench to spark this McDowell team. He out the basket, puts the first one up. String music. Nothing but the net. And he puts on with him one of the Cougars. Lines up for his second one. Shoots it. And it rolls off. So uh, the Cougars will be looking for the last shot probably this quarter. Wonder who will take it. Conley. No good. So McDowell's going to get the last shot this quarter. Moore tries to pass really too many Cougars around, but they will get the ball back with 15 seconds left. And Elkhorn has a one-point lead, 45 to 44. Dawson looking for somebody bringing in. He finds Hinkle underneath. Oh, <laughs> Went off Hinkle and hit Dawson before he get back in bounds. Well, Elkhorn City's uh, putting the defense on Hinkle there. Two or three times he's had the ball in his hands, and they've just uh, forced him to make turnovers. All right, now I wonder who's going to take the last second shot here. They better be getting it off because there's just five seconds left. Here it is. No good. And that was number, well, no good. The shot was from Sager. And that ends third quarter play. I think everybody in the gym thought Todd Conley was going to take it, and he ended up getting a rebound there and like he got it off anyway. So uh, Elkhorn City's up 45 to 44. We're getting ready to uh, go back to the station for a station break, and we'll be back with more of TV5 Sports, WPRG. Fully wireless sensors mean easy installation without damage from drilling. One app gives you total control over every aspect of your home. The ultimate deterrent for porch pirates. Know exactly when you receive a delivery. You need security that is a fully integrated security solution. Encrypted end-to-end -end and professionally monitored. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. Appalachian Wireless invites you to start the new year off with a bang. What better way than with a new Samsung device? The new Samsung Galaxy S21, S21 Plus, and S21 Ultra are the latest and hottest devices of the new year with great cameras, all-day battery life, and faster processors. The S21 is the phone everyone wants and will be jealous of. From now till the end of February, the new Samsung S21 models will be $400 off the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Up 
More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. 
make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. When life's unfortunate events happen, we sometimes see people at their worst. That's why we make it our goal to give them our best. If you've been involved in an auto accident, have a workers' compensation, social security, or SSI claim, you need an attorney with proven results. You need John Earl Hunt. I'm attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution, and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. Shot is good. Bailey on the foul. That is his fourth personal, I believe. It'll be Mike Fraley's fourth personal foul, as Adam said, and uh, that'll send Dale Hengel to the line to uh, try to complete the three-point conversion. And you couldn't ask for a bigger play to start out after that timeout for McDowell, and this could cut the lead to two points if Hinkle puts the three-point conversion in, and it's good. McDowell's going to have to control the ball and, and force uh, Elkhorn City in to foul them if they can never, uh, if, if they can never uh, get back uh, tied or take a lead. So they can go to the free throw line. And McDowell's got some kind of full court press on here. No effect to the Cougars. Puckett comes up, little baseline uh, shot from about the corner free throw line. He's hit it from there all night. Puckett has really been a spark for this Elkhorn City team. And here is Stanley, and that is a charge as Hunt that time got good, or that was Fraley that time, he's still in the game, got good position. Yeah, Scott Stanley thought that he had him beat to the last year. It's going to be Scott Stanley's fourth personal foul, and uh, he didn't need that, but uh, they sent Mike Duddleston back in and, uh, and send uh, Scott Stanley uh, over to, to the bench. And again, I was wanting to mention about Puckett. Really got a good look and a uh, jump shot. And, uh, He's been a good factor for Elkhorn City tonight. Seems like in these big ball games, it's like I told you in the championship game in PIT, he come in and uh, hit some big buckets there when Todd Conley was in uh, foul. He's either in foul trouble or fouled out, but anyway, he played. Uh, he stepped up in that game, and uh, he, he's a big time player. Okay, let's see. We got Puckett drives down the baseline, takes it back out to Sayer. Sayer to Conley, deflected by Johnson. He'll be Cougars ball. Game get kind of physical right now as Hopkins and Conley had a couple of words. And good defense. Oh, good scrappy play. Yes, well, they got a walk. That was, you just gotta, gotta think that was a good play by Johnson that time. You gotta say something about that. That was some great hustle by him. Looked like he was diving in the swimming pool after that ball and forced that walk. Yes, he was. Uh, excellent hustle. I always love to see hustle like that on the ball court. Still got 3.41 to go. Elkhorn City up by four. Back down with the ball. Dawson's got the ball at the top of the key. They're going to try to work it around, try to get a good shot. And Conley comes up with another steal. He's played a great defensive game tonight. Well, that's just a frustration foul, but Mike Bellows and uh, Conley just reached out there and took it away from him, and uh, he tried to get it back. He stabbed that two or three times, but ended up fouling. And Conley is just a sophomore, believe it or not, and he is incredible shooting talent and experience for a high school player great defensive player and he's just a solid solid high school basketball player and only a sophomore and he puts his first free throw in and that puts the lead to five and he missed the second shot but that was 32 Kevin Hunt. Kevin Hunt on the offensive rebound and puts it in. That moves it to 60 to 53, seven point lead. Almost a steal by the Cougars. Hankel puts it up, no good. Freddie on the rebound. And McDowell's in big time trouble now. Conley gets it stripped away from him. Johnson almost comes up with it. 
Puck it back to back out. Elkhorn City looking to run a little time off the clock, I would say. Hunt, shot no good. Dawson comes with the rebound. And with 2.50 left, we got a score of Elkhorn City 60. That's now 53, Sam Fort Lee for the Cougars. Hopkins for three, no good. Hinkle. Good. Oh, what a play by Hinkle that time. He just muscled that one in. A foul. a foul on Kevin Hunt, number 32. And as you said, Dale Hinkle just stuck her in the basket and got fouled again. So you go back to the line to try to complete another three-point play. The big Hinkle, he's wanting this ball game. He is on fire right now. He's a workhorse inside. This will be his second chance for the old-fashioned three-point three point play. And he eyes the basket, releases, and it is good. And the score is 60 to 56. The Cougars have a four-point lead. Still a lot of time in this ball game uh, for uh, McDowell to come back. They need a couple of breaks right here, though. Poor Sayer just about the trap. Conley's got the ball over the puck. He's looking inside. He's found Hunt. What do we got? Got a timeout. Time Elkhorn City. Timeout. Randy McCoy. 2:25 to go in the fourth quarter. Elkhorn City up on top, 60 to 56. Let's go back and for a station break, thank our sponsors, it's WPRG TV Fastball. Use your smart home speaker to arm and disarm the system. A full line of cameras for both indoor and outdoor areas. So you can keep an eye on your property no matter where you are. Get an early alert for water leaks before you lose thousands of dollars to expensive flood damage. One easy to use interface for your phone and the slimline touchpad. Enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a professional smart security system. I want to talk about a subject that's a little bit hard to talk about. Some of you out there may feel like you're at the lowest point in your life. Feels like it's never going to get better. You feel like the only option out there is to end your life. I promise that's not the only option and in fact that's not an option at all. Taking your life doesn't end the pain, it gives the pain to other people. Keep your head up, I promise things will eventually get better. Okay, we're back and this has been a real exciting ball game, Adam. I mean, I haven't got in on any one uh, one side of the ball game this year. Every, every one that I've done has been relatively close. And uh, I like we're getting ready to see another one here. Seen to be the same case as me. I've seen a guy, a lot of great high school basketball action. And seeing it makes me miss an awful lot. Just coming out of it last year. Well, I've seen a uh, seen a lot of ball games up till uh, this year. Of course, when you was playing, but. Uh, I've seen several ball games this year too, so it's still exciting. Yes, it is. It's the next best thing to playing right here. As the Cougars has the ball with a four-point lead, with 2:20 left in the fourth and final quarter. Yes, Air Force is going to spread it out a little bit and try to run some time off the clock. Yes, that's what they're doing. And the person they don't want to foul is, is Conley. And they're working around. Conley's got the ball. He takes it over to Fraley. Back out to Sayer. Over to Conley. McDowell might be wanting to look to foul, but no, a shot. That time by Puckett, and it's off the mark. So big break for McDowell. They can cut it to two points right here. Cook. Just about a walk, but no call. Hinkle. No good. He got it blocked. And foul on Johnson. Well, he met Johnson's fourth personal foul, and I believe that will send back uh, Fraley to the uh, free throw line for the bonus. And what a block it was by Fraley that time. Big block. Good defense. He had to block that Dale Hinkle could uh, cut it to a two-point game or uh, made a good uh, defensive uh, effort there and then also got the ball, and uh, Matt Johnson tried to get it back and found it. Well, Fraley's at the line. He's going to try to extend the lead to five points. He's up for the first one. And it's good. He gets the front end of the bonus. Score is 61-56 with 1.41 remaining. Back down in a little trouble. Play the eyes the basket. Shoots for his second shot. And it is good. 62-56. Six-point lead for the Cougars. Dawson comes down the court. And just about 
could have went either way on that call, but the foul will be assessed to Hunt, and Duff's going to go to the line. Or that was Fraley. That's Fraley. Fraley. So that's his fifth personal foul. So he's fouled out. He goes out of the game with a uh, minute and 35 uh, seconds to go with a total of uh, 12 points. But uh, the block he made down there a minute ago has uh, been the turnaround of this ball game. And this crowd over at Elkhorn City loves him. As when he come out, they gave him a good standing ovation. And Elson's at the line. He hits the first shot of the bonus. He cuts the lead to five points, 62 to 57. We'll try to cut it to four right here. Second shot's up and good. A down down by four points and a turnover. Johnson's got the ball. Back to Johnson. In. Big play, McDowell. The score is 62 to 60. 128 remaining. Big play by McDowell. I believe I'd, uh, I believe I'd go ahead and foul and put the pressure on him, man. I don't know. Their defense is working pretty good right now. And they got Conley inside right now, so he ain't gonna be no threat from three-point range. Hall back to Sayer. Hall's got the ball. Just looking in for Conley. Conley's guarded good. Still a minute to go. I believe that goes for the foul, though. Here's the Sayer's on. got the ball. Hall's got it. Just looking for somebody to be open. And there's another one. Hawkins has got the steal. Oh, and it goes back to, to Hall. Conley with the shot. Good. Big play by Conley. He puts Cougars up by four points. And we got 40 seconds left in this ball game. Johnson, he's on fire. Scored two points. Scores 64-62. And I believe Johnny Ray Turner wants a timeout with 36 seconds left. He whiz. Uh, McDowell right back in this ball game down two, like you said, with uh, 36 seconds uh, remaining. And uh, don't go away. We're going to go back to the station for a station break. This is WPRG TV Live Sports. The hottest device of the new year is now at Appalachian Wireless. The Samsung Galaxy S21. Till the end of February, all Samsung S21 models will be $400 off on the Advantage plan at Appalachian Wireless and AppalachianWireless.com. Better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Come see the lineup of all new 2021 Harleys at Mineshaft Harley-Davidson in Pikeville. I'm Attorney John Earl Hunt. I believe in the U.S. Constitution and I support the American flag. I'm a country lawyer. I'd be honored to represent you in your case. I'll treat you right. I'll do the best I can to help you. He's got a four-point lead, and I believe that's going to be Salyer number four going to the line. It'll be Mike Nettleson's uh, third personal foul, Adam. Once again, we were talking uh, earlier uh, in some of these ball games we've been doing about the respect as far as the ratings go for our teams down in the 58th district. This, this tells me a lot right here if they play with this Elkhorn City team, which has to be uh, rated number two in this region. Yes, you can't take nothing away from McDowell. They have played an excellent game. The Sawyer hits both free throws. Puts Elkhorn City up 68-62, six-point lead with 10 seconds left. So 
Elk one to the score left palm now. The ball goes out of bounds with two seconds remaining and Elk one City is going to go on further to the championship game of this Class A tournament. And a final shot by Puckett, almost get off the backboard, but the game is over, and Elkhorn City wins 68 to 62, a ball ball game it was. Well, I'll tell you what, it went right down to the last little bit there, last nitty gritty, and uh, Elkhorn City pulls off a big win there. Uh, I think it's uh, back down, kind of lost their composure there a little bit when the, when the game was tied, and Elkhorn City made the big run there the first four minutes of the fourth quarter. Back down, couldn't ever catch up. Uh, had some uh, big play from uh, Todd Conley uh, from Elkhorn City. Lord, I don't know, I'll have to have a calculator here. They had up all his points he got in the second half. Uh, but uh, we're going to go back to the station for a station break, and we'll be back hopefully for some post-game interviews and uh, talk about our upcoming ball game between the Fossil Panthers and the John Creek Market. This is WBRG TV Live Sports. More than ever, we're all living online right now. It's one more reason using online account management from Gearheart Communications just makes sense. Visit ecare.gearheart.com to sign up so you can pay your bill, review your statements, or set up worry-free automatic payments, all without leaving your home. Make life a little easier. Online account management from Gearheart Broadband. Sign up today at ecare.gearheart.com. Gearheart Broadband knows the internet is evolving, taking new twists and turns as we add our input, make our choices, and follow the light that connects us all. It's quite a journey, one to experience with the fastest speeds available. Contact Gearheart Broadband and connect to the internet speed that suits your journey and enjoy the ride. City and Mike Freddy had 12 points. Todd Conley, the big man for Elkhorn City tonight, he had 27 points and one, two, three, four, three pointers on that. Larry Puckett had eight points, Kevin Hunt nine, Brett Sawyer five points, and Justin Hall seven. And that totals a score of 68 points. McDowell was nine of 12 from the free throw line as Elkhorn City was 13 to 16, so some good free throw shoot from both teams. And there you have the stats and real good ball game, Adam. We're uh, kind of getting fired up for a second. We've got our good buddies, uh, Bill Bevins and Ira Branham down on the floor. We'll take it down there to them and get this second game started. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. And you just witnessed a dandy game. Uh, it was the Elk One City Cougars defeating McDowell with a final score of 68 to 62. Uh, Elk One will advance on to play in tomorrow night's championship game of the uh, third OLA Classic here from the TW Auburn Memorial Gymnasium. And Ira, we're getting ready for the second semifinal game. Each team coming here has won one piece. I'm looking for another dandy. The Panthers taking on the John Street Bearcats. Well, Billy, this is the uh, first game that I've been with you during, down here at the uh, Class A uh, 15 regional tournament. But uh, I tell you, the, this uh, game that's coming up here between Johns Creek and Michael is anything like the game that we just witnessed or the games that you guys have witnessed uh, here on WBRG uh, in the last couple of nights. And it should be a dandy. But I tell you what, talking about that last game that uh, PD and Adam just uh, called for the viewers out there, I think in that Conley, some kind of player. I think it lighted up for three point land, no doubt about it. And I tell you, I think that uh, Mike Fraley, if I'm not mistaken, had some like 12 points tonight and fouled out of the game. But I tell you what, he just has such a presence up, underneath the goal. And then you got Kevin Hunt. Elkhorn City is one great team, and they've got one great coach in Randy McCoy. But you know, we can't, we can't not. 
forget about Johnny Ray Turner, man. He is one of the uh, super coaches in the 15th region and across the state of Kentucky. Got two tremendous players up there that you and I talked about tonight in uh, Donaldson and Hinkle. And uh, Mr. Hinkle looks like he's just a man who's, uh, who can handle the pressure. And I think exactly. And of course, uh, Johnny Ray Turner, man, coaches in that 58th district. Man, he's a class act. You have to talk about Murray Garvin, one of the uh, really tremendous players in the 15th region. Another great player in Todd Smith. Then you got the Lockhart boys. There's, this Pikeville team is building a lot of chemistry. I think they lost something like seven players or eight players off of last year's squad. And a lot of people didn't think that this team would be ready for action, that it'd be a rebuilding year. But I think there's something like eight and seven on the year. And uh, they've already defeated Johns Creek here in the PIT uh, finals. Exactly right. And I, uh, let's take a minute. I believe we've got uh, three coaches the first team I've final game. Coach Randy McCoy with us. And uh, I'll turn it back up and start you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Bill. And I, uh, I've got Coach Randy McCoy, the Elkhorn City uh, Cougars. Uh, congratulations on the big win, sir. Thank you very much. I thought our kids did a great job defensively with a press from about the midpoint of the second quarter and through the second half, and that's what won the basketball game for. Yeah, a lot of the teams in this in our region have got uh, uh, one quality player, and uh, from what I've seen from your team, you've got about four real real good quality players there. Uh, well, I disagree with you on one fact. we got seven quality kids that are doing a lot of playing for us right now. The unsung hero of it is Brett Sayers, the little guard. He doesn't get a lot of publicity, but he does such a good job for us defensively and handling the ball. And, you know, our kids play hard, and they've worked to become good players. they still got a long way to go, and they know that. I, I've said the earlier uh, in our broadcast here, uh, Mike Fraley is a big-time ball player in this gym. Every game I've seen him play up here, he's played a good, good ball game. Todd Connolly, uh, uh, you're going to have to turn him loose a little bit more, Coach. <laughs> he shot the eyes out of that second quarter, or second uh, half, there, and uh, really gave your team a booster. Mac now, you can't take anything away from him. They played a good, hard ball game, but I think your uh, press that you put on in the second half really is doing all the pieces. They had a good game plan. I think, you know, when they went with their zone, they knew they had to try to get us to beat. We got a little hurry in the second half, and, but then I thought the defense again, the floor did it for us. Well, okay, who do, you, who, do you, who do you like in this second game? Who would you rather play, or does it matter? Hey, all I know is we'll be here tomorrow night to play, and we're going to have to play one of them. Uh, they're both good basketball teams, and, and to, to win tomorrow night we'd, against either one of them, we'd have to have a great effort. Well, haven't you, uh, you split with Johns Creek. Have you played five? We've only played Johns Creek once. We lost them uh, by two points at Johns Creek, and we played Pipe once in the finals of PIT, and we, we escaped with a win that night. Well, congratulations on a big win, Coach, and we look to see you here tomorrow night, and, uh, and uh, good luck on Thank taking you all the way much. down the road. Thank you very much. Okay, once again, Coach uh, Randy McCoy is uh, here from the TW. T.W. Oliver Memorial Gymnasium. I uh, want to thank him for coming up and doing the interview. And uh, we've got Bill Bevins and Ira Branham up uh, in the press booth. And we're going to turn this second game over to them. Thank you, Bill. Okay, thanks a lot, P.D. That was a great game. And right now we've got Ira Branham with one of the assistant coaches of uh, Pikeville, uh, Coach uh, Kevin uh, Garris. And Ira, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Uh, viewers where I'm here with Kevin Garris, assistant coach at Pikeville High School. Kevin, that was just a dandy of a game that we just watched. Now that's what this tournament's all about, the small schools, and you can tell that uh, on a given night anybody's got a chance. McDowell had their chances down the stretch to win, and they just couldn't execute. Now, Kevin, you're assistant coach here at uh, Pikeville High School. Tell us real briefly a little bit about yourself. Uh, I've been here, this is my seventh year as assistant coach here, and uh, coach, I was here when Coach Wallen his second year, and I've been through him and Coach Tripp, and uh, back with Coach Wallen, it's been a real experience. Now, Kevin, a lot of people didn't think that your team would have what it takes. They didn't think that you would have a record like eight and seven at this point on the year. You came in here, you won the Pike Invitational Tournament, beating this uh, Johns Creek team. What can we expect tonight? Uh, we're basically playing the same game all the time. We're just press and run and get to the opposite boards. Well, who do you, uh, tell us about this Johns Creek team before we get back to yours. Who are you going to be keying on tonight? I think Jason Taylor is the one that makes them go and if we stop his penetration and not allow him to make the easy passes inside, 
then that shuts him down because his forte is penetrate, dump it off when you come to stop him. Well, didn't he hit something like nine three-pointers in a game just recently? Uh, that was Ratliff hit nine against Sheldon Clark in the uh, consolation game of the Pike Limitation. But what about your team? How are uh, how are the kids up uh, for the game tonight? Are they uh, healthy? Uh, we're all, we, we've got a few bangs and bruises, but our kids, they just play stri uh, strictly on guts, and if they hurt, they won't let you know until after the game. Going to be up and down the court all night? That's what we're, our game plan is very simple every night. Play as hard as you can for as long as you can. If you get tired, get out. Coach, best of luck to you. Thanks for being with us. Okay, Billy, we've got, uh, we've got the number four team going against the number five team in the 15th region. We've just interviewed uh, assistant coach Kevin Garris, and I'm going to take it back to you, Billy. Okay. Thanks a lot, Ira. The uh, final score in the first semifinal game, it was the Elkhorn City Cougars defeating the McDowell Dirt Devils by a final score of 68 to 62. And I got here about halftime, and man, what a game. We expect another good one coming up in the second semifinal game. Of course, the uh, Johns Creek Bearcats coming in here to play the Pikeville Panthers. And uh, these teams have met, met twice this year, and uh, each one of them's won one. And uh, this will be uh, the deciding factor, of course, the uh, winner to go on to play Elkhorn City tomorrow night for the championship of the boys. 15th Regional All-Way Classic from the T.W. Oliver Memorial Gymnasium. I'll tell you what, Dr. Don, we've got just a few minutes here before the uh, tip-off. Let's uh, take a break for these fine commercial messages, and we'll bring it right back to them. This is TV5 Sports and WPRG.